Holden Burkett from Streeter, Illinois. My rank was fire control technician third class. Okay, I went to boot camp in uh, Great Lakes. I was out of high school, but I was still 17 when I went in the Navy. My father signed for me. My mother thought he had a heart attack, but he did. And uh, I went through boot camp, and I went on main side for about two months. I was working in a galley, five, and I was a go for. I went for this and for that, okay? And then there was about probably five or six hundred of us went out of Great Lakes on the air. We flew out of Midway Airport in Chicago to the Missouri. I went to Missouri about seven o'clock at night. I thought, man, this thing is not going to float. <laughs> I mean, it was huge. And I went to sea, and we pulled out the next morning into a hurricane. Well, I'm from Illinois. I never saw the ocean in my life. And I was scared and sick. There was a bunch of us. That's the only time I ever got seasick was the first time. We broke a scene in our bow, and we went into Pearl Harbor to get a fix on our way to Korea. I made, uh, when we were in Pearl Harbor for about a week. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of places that I never was on in Missouri. I was in fire control technician in 5 inch and 40 millimeter, and mostly I worked on 40 millimeter directors. I was told one time by, we had a, uh, Warren officer was in our division. He told me to go out and check the four millimeter directors out, turn them on, make sure they're working. Well, I turned one, I had two seamen with me. I was third class at the time. I turned it on and it blew up. <laughs> it, the motor blew up in it. And oh boy, <laughs> he was going to, I was really in trouble. Well, later on he come around, he said, no, he said, you did what you're supposed to do. It had water in it. And they're not supposed to have water. They're supposed to be waterproof. But it, I got away with that. After that, he said, well, yeah, you did what you're supposed to do. We went on to Korea. I actually, we, we bombarded them down the coast and everything, and uh, we lost our, one of our helicopters. I think that was on our second tour, we lost our helicopter. And uh, I remember General MacArthur coming aboard. I was about from here, to that gentleman over there from him. And uh, they had a big meeting with Sigmund Rhee, who was the president of South Korea at the time, and we were the flagship for Task Force 77, 7th Fleet. And they had a big meeting aboard ship. It was right not too long after that that MacArthur got fired by Truman. And uh, at that, then they told us that the war was over. We were going home. It was done. Then the Chinese came into the war, and we went up to the, we went up and evacuated the Americans. I had a cousin that was in the army. He was in the evacuation, and uh, we pulled out of there on Christmas Eve. And uh, then we bombarded up and down the coast quite a bit. And we, then we got relieved. I think I think the Iowa relieved us at that time, battleship Iowa. And we went back to the states and went on a midshipman cruise. Went into Annapolis and picked a bunch of the midshipmen up and took them to. Uh, I think we took them to Oslo, Norway. Then we went into France and England. And we come back and we and, uh, went on the I went on the second cruise to Korea. And that cruise, they shot down our helicopter. I remember seeing that. I was on the old level at the time. We were aboard. We were uh, bombarding. I forgot where it was at exactly. And it's, this is sixty some years ago. And. Uh, they shot, they were spotting for us. The helicopter was doing our spotting. We had two uh, Marine officers aboard and a pilot that was, I think he was 21 years old. And he was an ensign in the Navy. And uh, they shot it down. I, I seen it go down. He, we, they were on our way back and they were over the water when they shot it down, but they were quite a ways, not too far from shore. And uh, we could see, after they, we got the, the pilot back. The other helicopter went over and snagged him and got him back. And uh, we saw two people running on the beach. We couldn't tell. Them. We thought they, they might be the Marines, but we were, I think, 50, 60 miles in front of our lines. There's no way. And there was full of China, Chinese over there. I mean, they, there was a big column of them. I don't think they wouldn't have made it. I think they were presumed killed in action, all three of them. And when I say I was up there, there was a lieutenant commander who was assistant gunnery officer. At that time, if he could see the targets, he would coronate the guns, okay? And I was a radio. I would radio it down to the gun mounts and that. And there was three other guys up there that were aircraft lookouts. They did come in. They, we saw airplanes coming in at night. And at midnight, they'd wake us up or 2 o'clock in the morning, but they never got close enough to us. 
I don't think they would have done that. I don't know if we could hit a jet with our 40 millimeters or not. <laughs> that would be a good question. I remember getting in a minefield one time in Borden, Missouri, and we could see the mines, and I never saw a ship go so slow. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it crawled out of there. And we had lookouts all over the ship. And we had 60 Marines aboard ship, and they were actually shooting at the mines with their rifles, with their guns, but they never did blow one up. You just had to hit it. But uh, we got out of it. But I, went, we, I don't think they were worried about the ones you, you can see. It's the ones they can't see that they got to worry about. Still got menus at home of some of our menus that we had. It was, they, they, we had good menus. I remember I had a friend from Southern, I'm from Illinois. I had a friend from Southern Illinois, and we were standing in line for one day before the holiday, and they had all these turkeys stacked up in the thing there. And we were looking at the dates on 1942. This was 1950, so they'd been froze all that year. But yeah, and when you went, when we ate, we ate. You didn't sit in there and have a chit chat. You ate. You got out because we had 2,500 people aboard that ship. You didn't have time to talk a lot. And uh, then when on the second tour, I, my brother tried to get aboard the ship. He was he was my younger brother. He uh, passed away at the age of 49, unfortunately. But uh, he came aboard ship. He tried to get aboard while we were in Korea, and they would not let him aboard our ship because I was on there. And he came aboard, and I, after the Korean War, I made one cruise with him down to Rio de Janeiro. Last day of war in Missouri, I went to Rio de Janeiro. I went down th through the equator. I'd never been through the equator. My brother was with me at that time. He was a storekeeper. And uh, they literally beat us <laughs> for bad. We went. They had shillelaghs made out of canvas, and you had to, they tipped you over and into a tank, and they kept dunking you, asking you if you were a shellback or a lollipop or whatever it was. <laughs> Finally, you got the message, and you said shellback, then you had to crawl through a line, and these guys were with them. And when you got through the line, you got to join the line. Well, the line got longer and longer. <laughs> but it was a pretty good initiation, and everybody went through the initiation. I don't care if you were an officer, if you had never been through the equator before, you went through it. It was interesting. I, I You know, I, like I told my wife, I got four children. I never was sorry that I ever went in the Navy. I enjoyed it. I, went, I got a lot to see a lot of the world, and I was never sorry about it.